Okay, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining today's class, a course on uh, the holiness of God, BC 209. Um, I hope you've been uh, learning something from this course um, and it's something that's been helpful to you guys. Uh, can you hear me, Nicole, uh, Francis? Louder? Okay, a little louder, sure. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, so as I was saying, I hope you've been uh, able to learn something uh, from this course about God, about His holiness and the importance of it. Um, right, so from chapter one, what can you recall? Anything that you could recall from chapter one? Holiness is not just moral things that we have, standards that we have here. God's holiness is beyond that. Okay, so what is that beyond? It's the otherness of God. The otherness of God, okay. All right, let's, yeah, what, what else? What else can you recall from what we've covered so far? He is thrice holy. His word is holy. What okay. God spoke, he spoke in holiness so that uh, when he promised to David, uh, he says, like, uh, I sworn to David in my holiness, saying that I have kept my word apart to do the promise that I have given for David. And then right. we see he is three times holy. All the angel beings in the heaven were holy. Right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sri Radha. So, um... <clears throat> that uh like uh, he is so holy that when angels worship him mm. so they close their eyes but the same holy god chose mm. us that so mm. that we we can be his friends yeah like he came uh, to us like uh, to become our friends yeah yeah thank you okay all right mm -hmm. thank you Anything. I mean, I'm just asking what do you recall from what we've learned? I'm not trying to do a memory test. Uh, you know, I'm just see what what is it that ministered to your heart that you can recall immediately with regards to this? You know, as soon as you hear the words or the topic, the holiness of God, what comes to your mind first from what we've learned? That's all. I'm not trying to test your memory. So. Uh, I, I uh, good get to learn so many things from this chapter like about God's holiness how God is holy and whatever he spoke that all word is holy and as we saw in Old Testament also he is uh, holy no one can stand in his place and even no one can go in his place until he will not uh, uh, make himself holy right. so as we see but through Jesus Christ to yeah. get a chance to go in his presence to meet God. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Nico. All right, I'm going a whole circle. Mm. For me, it was really like whenever we are doing mistakes, like, I used to think like that, okay, I did mistake, or okay, now I have suffered myself, or it's not for me, and all. But for the issue, like, okay, people are thinking like, okay, who can to help mm. me and separate from him and I'm trying to mm. begin to do mm. Who can help me to be God? But because of the sin life, mm. which mistake I did, I'm going back to something and I'm separating from you. Mm. It's not like that. Come and ask for your support. We want us thinking how we speak. Right. Thank you. You can go to Alan. Yeah. If, uh, those online also feel free to share in the, in the chat section. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. I quickly uh, remind this uh, one thing and mm -hmm. is absolute sinlessness. Mm -hmm. Like holy is, I mean, he is the meaning for it. Mm. Is the holy God, and uh, when the uh, other thing I reminded is this: His nature, His nature is uh, uh, reproduced in us. He wants us to be like Him. Mm. And one of the one of the thing you shared with is uh, uh, which uh, Jerry Bridges 
said holiness is the perfection of all mm. other attributes his power is holy power his mercy is holy mercy mm. his wisdom is holy wisdom it is his holiness more than any other attribute that makes him worthy of our praise mm. like his the definition of holy whatever he do is is absolute holy that's what uh, we can uh, yeah it's awesome yeah that's off record yeah thanks okay <laughs> okay <laughs> all right nina we are just going i'm um, just asking um you know what do you recall immediately from what we've learned so far on, on the subject that's it so uh is there anything that you'd like to share Um, I find the, uh, God. Um, he well, he upholds that holiness above everything, and he calls each one of us to live into that um, mm. holiness. Like we also have to be holy, and he already made us holy through Jesus Christ. But yes, uh, living that uh, in our mind, that should be there. Like we have to be holy unto the Lord. Yeah, everything what you are doing, we have to be. And he already given a lot of things that we can do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I think we, we started off learning about his otherness, right? His, uh, his holiness, his absolute, uh, who he is, right? He, uh, because in our context, when we use the word holy, we only think moral purity. Moral purity is sinlessness, basically. That's what moral purity is. You know, uh, I don't smoke, I don't drink alcohol, I don't watch pornography, I don't lie, I don't gossip, uh, I don't backstab anyone, uh, I am not jealous, uh, I, I don't have any lustful uh, desires in my heart, uh, I don't have uh, ill thoughts against another person. or uh, Ill So that's what moral purity is, right? Isn't it? It's a huge part of righteousness as well and sanctification. Yes, but when we say that you know God is holy, um, He is a being that we have not seen or heard proper enough because He is eternal. Yes, He is revealed to us, you know, through His Son Jesus Christ. We understand that. Yes, one hundred percent. That in we see in Colossians chapter two verse nine that in in Jesus Christ there is the fullness of deity. So He is revealed to us who He is, but at the same time, He is holy. And it's a be you know he is a being that we we can't fully comprehend. You un understand what I'm saying, right? We we cannot completely comprehend his his <laughs> majesty. We can try to come up with any words uh, you know uh, possible to define him or to describe him. But then if there's one word that that we can make sense of who he is is that he is holy. Right? It's, a, it's a very alien, very foreign uh, thought to us, right? And we went on to learn that this holy God, who is thrice holy, uh, who surrounds himself in, in holiness, right? Holiness adorns his house. We see all of that. Uh, and yet, it's he reaches out for us and says, I want you to be like me. Right? Be holy, for I am holy. Yeah, he gives that command. And, uh, and another part, what is interesting, or what we've learned is, that he just didn't give us the command. Right? It's one thing to just give, give you the command and let you figure out how to do it. Okay, I want you to be holy. Uh, what do we do? How sh what does that mean? Because it's a very foreign thought to us. Uh, right? That was one of the very early commands that he gave to Israelites as well, right? I want you to be set apart for me. Right? Uh, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the Israelites who've lived in the land of Egypt for how many years? 400 years. 430 in total, but you leave the 30 years of Joseph. But 400 years in the land of Egypt, in bondage, specifically speaking, right? Okay, fine, 430. We'll bring Joseph into... But uh, how many generations is that? Uh, approximately 10 generations. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven. We are only seven of us in this room. And then, yeah, sure, nine. Um, think about 10 generations. Your generation goes away and then comes yours. 
goes away and then comes Nichols, goes away and then comes Francis's generation, then then Nina's, and then Anand's, then mine, and then three more generations. Ten generations of people have been exposed to idolatry. Ten generations of people only understand one way of worship, that is the Egyptian's way of worship. For ten generations, they have not seen or heard of this God. They only know that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that he's going to send a deliverer. That's all. But they've been exposed to this foreign way of worshipping. Idolatry is what they have known for. And that's why when they came to Mount Sinai and they saw the whole mountain on fire and trembling, and they were puzzled. It's very easy for us to judge and you know and say it's like, yeah, you know, they stayed away. They didn't want you know to do anything with the God. But you have to understand that they have no idea that how dangerous and you know how terrifying he can be. Right? Awesome is literally transferred, uh, you know, translated as terror. When we say God is awesome, we say, hey, that's so awesome. That car is awesome, we say. But the actual meaning of awesome is terror. And terror strikes fear, isn't it? It's like that holy fear. Um, and so they could not, they didn't know what to make of it. Uh, and uh, and then that's when he gives them the command saying, okay, you know, I've, I've set you apart, Exodus 19. Among, of all the nations, I've called you unto myself. You have yourself seen how I brought you out of on eagle's wings. Yeah. So he reaches out and then he also gave them the commandments. Okay, and this is how you should be. Um, and this is how you can you can be set apart unto me in everything that you do, especially in the way you worship me, will set you apart. Because the way you worship me will be very different from all the other surrounding nations' worship. And that will show the people around you that you are set apart, that you are not like them. right? So worship at the core is, is so powerful and so strong. right? Are you with me, right? And so, and well, so the first thing is that he is holy. The second thing is that he gives us the command. He, he, and he desires for us to be holy. And he gave us the Holy Spirit who will empower us and teach us and help us to live a life of holiness. And so that's what we saw briefly with sanctification and righteousness. Right? Yes. Yes, no, maybe? Somewhat? Okay. Okay. Uh, and in the last chapter, we covered a little bit about uh, the importance of uh, why personal holiness is important. We looked at it in a question and answer format uh, kind of a thing. Okay, so uh, chapter six is titled "In the Beauty of Holiness." This is the last chapter in this section, section one, uh, that addresses uh, you know God's holiness uh, and personal holiness. And from the next section, we look at uh, repentance and the importance of it. You know, when we fall, uh, how can how can we heal? Right? How can we be restored? When we backslide, uh, the importance and the significance of repentance. Okay, so we'll look into the next section uh, in the next class, probably next week. Okay, so in the beauty of holiness. Now, when was the first time you came across this uh, line or this verse? Do you recall? In the beauty of worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Makes in sound. Uh huh. Yeah. Sorry. In a song, okay. You. Psalm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is also worse than psalm, but I, like, okay. I asking when did you hear it? First time. In the. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. The beauty of holiness. Uh, Nickel? See, again, you don't have to answer it. It's like, I'm, <laughs> see, rather, anything? Do you remember, recall when 
I have a little bit of a kindergarten students in my class right now. You know. Okay, so when you hear the, the the words in the beauty of His holiness, what comes to your mind? What what do you make of it? What do you understand of it? Nothing. Nothing is coming. Something is coming and clashing. <laughs> uh, when we are exhorting him, we used to use these words like his um, whatever he does, uh, what is he? We exhort him like he is holy. Mm. And and most of the things like no one saw directly uh, actually, but we we exhort him like that in the beauty uh, like I, I i remember this you are beautiful by phil wickham mm -hmm. when when that song also it was it was describing everything about god that he is beautiful mm -hmm. and and i don't know the exact uh, mm -hmm. how to how to express but that feel is is so beautiful when we when we when we really feel that I, I i only believe if some if some individual if any particular if he really individually experience only they'll know that that experience yeah. like uh that beauty that that feel yeah yeah we, we i i think in words i uh, for me i can't do it i right. couldn't describe the beauty of his holiness yeah. anybody in the beauty of his holiness <clears throat> when we see like uh, the beauty of holiness gods like uh, uh, about his nature about how his character mm. god is holy and uh, uh, about his beauty uh, one of the words also say in the sums like cloud it's showing your beauty god okay. so we can see in nature also how all things like beautiful all, yeah. all awesome how yeah. god created yeah, yeah, yeah. If nature this much can beautiful, then how beautiful will be God? Right. So we can imagine that. <laughs> yeah. The beauty of falling and uh, how we say like his he is handsome, like his eyes is her eyes are beautiful, and in that way I think like the beauty of God is holiness more than the power. Or more than the authority that he carries, the most beautiful thing about himself is that holiness that nobody can fully describe, nobody can fully comprehend. Right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, and thanks everyone for sharing what you shared. Um, you know, his it, when you when we look at the, the the creation or the nature, for example, right? Romans chapter one verse twenty, he says that he has revealed himself through the creation, isn't it? Uh, if there's so, if there's a creation, you know, it's pointing towards a creator, isn't it? Uh, it has to, right? Or we need to acknowledge the creator, isn't it? Um, for, for example, if someone makes a uh, anything, a beautiful car design, or a beautiful cake, uh, you know. Uh, you say, okay, the cake looks beautiful, and then you look at the person and say, good job. It's like, this is awesome, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and so when you appreciate a, the creation, uh, you are also acknowledging the creator. Right? Um, and that's why, and he's glorified, and that's why he's chosen to reveal himself, you know, uh, in, his, in the creation. That's what Romans says in 120, Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Um, and uh, you know this, this thing called the the Shema in Deuteronomy chapter six verse four. It's the Shema is is the Jewish prayer. Uh, let's let's look at it. Tell me what it says. Hear, O Israel, that the Lord thy God is one. 
right? Uh, and like me, there is no other. In, in Isaiah 44, verse 5 and 6, and Isaiah 45 says, um, like me, there is no other. Right? Like me, there is no other. See the other nest there? <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of helping us think a little bit more deeper, although we've understood, learned about holiness of God. Um, simple words like his beauty, uh, worship him in the beauty of his holiness. We understand, okay, we understand the word beauty, we understand his holiness, uh, but in, in that context, we just can't look at it as just mere words. We are using those words and attributing it to a God. And that should mean something. That should make us ponder and wonder. We just can't skim through it, you know. Okay, in the worship him in the beauty of his holiness. We just slow down and uh, you know, and wonder and ponder. And I think that's a beautiful uh, mark of a creator as well. See, you now if if we are create, if God is a creator, uh, we are created, isn't it? And if we are created, we are also creative. Yes, that's that's one of the beautiful characteristics uh, of God. That's why when the Bible says that we are made in the image and the likeness of Him, that's what it is. That we all possess the the, the characteristics of Him. That we are we have the ability to love, because God is love. Right. We have the ability to forgive because He forgives. We have the ability to be kind because He is kind. He is gentle. He's slow to anger. Right. Um, you get what I'm saying, isn't it? And so that's why we we need to ponder. And uh, you know, and and he knew that we would be creative, and that's why he gave us trees and not tables, right? So a carpenter would look at the tree or a piece of wood, and he's like, hmm. He sees something in that only only what he can see, isn't it? Like a sculpture for all of us, we just look at a big rock. But he sees something else. Are you with me, right? So why am I saying all of this is uh, in all of these small little details that his beauty and his holiness is displayed, right? And uh, when we say like him, there is no other. I'm sure you've heard of the attributes of God. What are some of the attributes of him, God? It's a very fundamental theological question. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so he is omni, all the omnis. He is omnipotent, omniscient, omni uh, present, uh, and he is faithful, he is justice, his love, his mercy, he is faithful. Right? For, so you take that one word, omnipotent. Uh, again, that means when we say that, that, like him, there is no other. That means there is no one like him who is as powerful as he is. Right? And when we say he is holy, there is no one like him who is as holy as he is. There is no one like him who is ever present like he is. The immutability of God is what? The immutability is the unchanging one. That's what it simply is. That's another attribute of God. That, that, so he doesn't change. If he changes, he stops becoming God. He doesn't change. He's the unchanging one. That's what we call it as the immutability, right? In his faithfulness, there is no one like him. So all of that is pointing to one thing, his otherness. And that there is beauty in this holiness, right? Um, so, and I recall this, and I, um, I, I remember the year 2010, um, in October, where he started, uh, you know, I was... In his grace and in his mercy, he began to reveal his... A perspective of his holiness, right, and started, um, you know, uh, encountering me with his holiness and putting this burning desire in me to pursue his holiness, um, and then that somehow led me to the Song of Songs book, you know, uh, and uh, the Song of Songs will be the last book that you will think of when you think of the holiness of God. Right, uh, <laughs> but that in that season, I was led to that book, and uh, there's so many things, uh, you know, that was just stood out from the book. For example, uh, he is uh, he's the bright and morning star. 
That's what he's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand. So what does that mean? He's the fairest of ten thousand. That means he's beautiful. And then there is simply says that ten thousand was the biggest number back then. Right. That means simply saying that there is no one like him among the ten thousand. And now we can just say, you know, we uh he's the bright and morning star. That means all of that is something that you would use to define or describe someone's beauty, isn't it? Oh, your face is shining like a beautiful morning star. Like, hey, thank you, thank you. You know, <laughs> fair and <laughs> fair and lovely, and just a little bit of yeah, no, 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 nothing. I just layer, you know. <laughs> it's like, yo, you know. <laughs> Okay, you know, it's like multiple layers. <laughs> Not you, Francis. Not you. <laughs> yeah, first we put moisturizer and then some cream and then something and then some something else. Oh yeah, foundations. How do you know, Prince? <laughs> okay, so uh, are, are you all with me? Right, and uh, I just want us to just ponder. And it, His Holiness is all in is throughout his, uh, you know, the the Bible in every book of the Bible, even in Lamentations. <laughs> uh, right, He is beautiful, and that means He is holy. Uh, from Genesis to Revelation, He is holy, uh, and we read that. And if you just need have the patience to just calm down, slow down, and see it, He will reveal it to us. Are you all with me? Right? Um, so in chapter 6, we see that uh, in, metaphorically in the scriptures, we see when the Bible says that the, uh, the eyes of the Lord is everywhere, that's pointing towards his omniscience. Right? His, the, the hand of the Lord was, uh, uh, was on a person, his, what, his presence is with him. His face, his face was shining on, on, a, on, on a group of people. It simply says that that his presence, his favor is over them, right? In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 15 says, in the light of the king's face is life. Okay, go to that scripture. I, I, I hope it's the right one. Proverbs 16, verse 15. Yeah? In the light... Of the king's face is his life, and then his sorry, his okay, his favor. Okay, listen to those words. His favor is like the cloud of the latter rain. Latter rain means the much so in again in the in the geography of that region. Uh, they get four rainfalls. So they, they have four different words for rain. And four different words points to a different time of the rain in during the year. Uh, and the last rain is called the latter rain. Okay, that uh, so in all these four, the rains that comes in first time, the second time, third time, it does different things to the soil. And it's beautiful. So in English, we just use the word rain. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, stay with me, okay? We're still talking about the holiness of God, his face and his light and his beauty in it. Um, in Deuteronomy chapter 5, I think it says that God spoke to Moses out of the fire. He spoke face to face with Moses. That's what it says. Uh, I hope I'm right. It's. I hope it's. Deut I know it's Deuteronomy. I know it's in the Bible. It's in the top left hand corner. <laughs> My Bible. Chapter 5, verse 4? Yeah, awesome. Okay, thank you. I'm really bad at memorizing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right, right. Um, thank you. So I want us to, again, we're very briefly going to talk about, you know, um, His Holiness and Moses just a little bit because we're going to go into Psalm 90 very quickly. Uh, and no one better to, uh, you know, consider then Moses for us to, you know, study a little bit and why he writes Psalm 90 from a different perspective. So out of the fire, God spoke to Moses face to face, right? 
Okay, and then in some in Proverbs 16 verse 15, we see that in the light, king's face is life, and his glory or his favor is like the latter rain. Okay, uh, one more scripture. Let's go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 39, 29. Uh, Ezekiel 39 29. Can someone go and tell me it should say that I will not hide my face any longer? I will pour out my spirit on them. That is... Okay. 39 29. The other way. I always make that mistake. So Ezekiel 39 29 says, I will not hide my face. Okay, so look at this. So in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 4, it says, Out of the fire he spoke to Moses face to face. Are you with me? And then now we see in Ezekiel 39, 29, he says, I will not hide my face any longer. That means I'm going to reveal myself to you. I will not hide my face any longer. I will pour out my spirit. Pour out, okay? And then again, once again, sorry for being redundant. Proverbs 16, 15, in the light of the king's face is life. Oh, my favor will be like the latter rain. So why am I saying all of this? Um, and then, you know, in Numbers chapter 6, towards the end of the chapter, we see the Aaronic blessing. God tells Moses to tell Aaron to bless the people of Israel, saying what? May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. And then it goes on to say, let the countenance of your face increase. Let it increase. Now, what led the people of Israel by day and by night? Pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 4. Out of the fire, he spoke face to face with Moses. Now, Ezekiel 39, 29 said, I will not hide my face any longer. I will pour out my spirit. And then Proverbs 16, 15 says, my favor is like the latter rain. So <laughs> why are we doing this now? Pour out. We use that word when? We assign we to describe rain, pour out, or there was an there was a huge outpouring. Yes or no? Yes, no, maybe. Okay. For the rain to come, for there to be an outpouring, what needs to be there? Yeah. For it to rain, there has to be clouds. So his face was also in the cloud. Why? I will not hide my face any longer. I will pour out my spirit. And then in Malachi, he says, I will come to you like that latter rain. In Matthew, Malachi 4, I think. I forget. Oh, something. Okay, let's not go there. So the point here is, when God led the people of Israel as a pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night, his face was there in the cloud as much as it was in the fire. So the point is, you can have face-to-face -face encounters with God and not know it. People of Israel did not know it. Are you with me? And so Moses, understanding or having this revelation of knowing firsthand of what it is um, to have this face-to-face -face encounters with God, he writes Psalm 90, right? Psalm 90. It's uh, now I'm just referring to your notes. Holiness, God's beauty seen through us. That's the section. In Psalm 90, verse 16 and 17, it says, Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Okay, so there are two Hebrew words used there besides glory and then beauty. So let your work appear to your servants. Uh, please follow along in your notes. 
Let your work appear to your servants and your glory, the Hebrew word used there for glory is hadar, which means magnificence, glory, honor, splendor, excellency, ornament. Okay, so let your work appear or reveal, let there be a revelation of an unveiling to your servants and your glory to their children. Okay, by now we've established that holiness is God revealing or expressing His beauty. It's like His beauty, His glory, His, uh, his, his splendor is all a manifestation of His holiness. Okay, so that is Hadar. See, then the next verse is, and let the beauty, the Hebrew word used, used there is Noam, okay, or known. Right? The, and let the beauty, which is delight, splendor, grace, beauty, pleasantness, of the Lord our God be upon us. Okay, you see this. Now he's just elaborated the Aaronic blessing from um, you know Numbers chapter six. May the Lord bless you and keep you. That's just a, a like a benediction prayer. He says to release over the people of Israel because and now he's kind of elaborating on that, right? Let the beauty, the splendor, grace, beauty, pleasantness, delight of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Right? And so the word hadar, the Hebrew word hadar is emphasizing the glory possessed by someone. Like who has it? Okay, what is it? Hadar is, is, is emphasizing the glory of someone who's possessing it. Like, who has it? And the Hebrew word noem is emphasizing its effect on those who behold the glory. Are you with me? All right, so Hadar is, okay, God is it's saying, okay, God, He's magnificent, His glory, His honor, splendor, excellency. He's possessing it. It's, it's, it's the source. He is the source. It, everything is from Him. And then noem, the Hebrew word used there, it says, okay, as we look at Him, as we look to Him, there is a reflection of Him over us. Yeah, and so, I mean, we, we all know the story where Moses, uh, after his encounters with God, he came down, his face was radiant. He had to wrap around his uh, you know, uh, face with a cloth. Yeah? And then Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I think was, five, I'm not sure if it's 2 Corinthians chapter 3 or 1 Corinthians. Uh, my apologies, you can look it up. It says, Paul is saying, Okay, his glory that was a fading glory. It faded eventually. And now we have a glory that does not fade in Jesus. Okay, uh, now that's a whole different topic for another day. We can discuss about that. Okay, so Moses in nine, Psalm 90, verse 16 and 17, he's praying that God's beauty be seen up people. In other words, he's saying, you know, I'm just paraphrasing it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Moses wished to say, like, hey, guys, you guys are having face-to-face -face encounters with him. There's a, <laughs> there's a cloud. His face is in the cloud. His face is in the fire. Just look to him. Don't just look at it like some magical science fiction thing that is leading us. You guys following, uh, learning something? Okay, there's a question from Nina here. Is it really possible to have face-to-face -face encounters with God under the Old Covenant? Uh, what does it refer to? Scripture says, no one has seen God, but God, the only, uh, God the only at the Father's side has revealed Him. Because in the New, of course, Jesus revealed and declared, uh, we know who God is. Yes, so, uh, you know, when... It, it is an intimate language that is used there, Nina. If uh, if you actually go, uh, if you can find the Tanakh, which is the Hebrew Bible, um, the it, Tanakh is the Hebrew Bible, and uh, and there's one Tanakh in the library, church office library, and I I went to, uh, you know went to these scriptures in Deuteronomy chapter five verse four and Numbers twelve. Numbers twelve, he tells uh, Aaron and Miriam uh, is. Uh, I speak to other prophets in visions and dreams, but not so with my servant Moses. With him, I speak face to face. 
and so uh, you know the language that is used literal translation in those words is it says uh, with him i speak mouth to mouth that means it simply means that you know i'm i speak with him very intimately that's that's all it is uh, you know it's um, yeah then that's all i can elaborate on what i understand of that is that he spoke with moses like he spoke with nobody else in the old covenant and he says that so i don't i speak to him plainly clearly not in visions or in dreams that means it's clear communication uh, you know and there's this part in exodus 33 it says when moses pitched a tent outside of the camp of israel and as he walked in cloud came down the cloud of the glory of god came down and there he spoke with god face to face i mean yeah just like that you know i'm going to meet a friend for coffee <laughs> uh so correct yes that, yeah that, that's what i understand from it and uh and now we know in the new covenant that it has been made so beautifully possible for us through jesus uh you know some of us wish that oh you know we, we were in the old testament we had encounters like that like moses did but we don't understand what we've been given we don't understand what we've been given right uh and and yeah that's that's what i would say so right and i mean this the, again i'm going back to 2011 i'm sorry uh, to just keep going back to the past because that uh, that year was marked with something like very defining distinct year in my life and uh, you know i was remembering reading about the passage about face to face with god and uh, you know, I was in the zone, like, show me your face, show me your face. I, you know, I want to have these encounters with you, just like, you know, what Moses did. And I want to see what Isaiah saw and all that. Um, and, uh, and you know, there's also the song by Don Potter, show me your face, Lord. It's just, uh, it stays, stays with me, you know, forever. And, and then again, you know, the Holy Spirit begins to teach me in his gentleness, in his kindness, in his mercy. Uh, it's like, hey, you know, uh, I will reveal Jesus to you. And then he begins to take me to his word. And then he shows me he is the word. And, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, so that's what it is. So it helps me understand that in the new covenant, it's, it, it, scripture clearly says it's a better covenant than the old, right? Um, so, yeah, and we are all invited to have this free, intimate fellowship, uh, you know, with our God, with the one true God. Are you all with me? Okay. I think we've uh, spoken enough for this uh, session. <laughs> we'll pause here and uh, we'll we'll take a break and we'll come back. Okay, Nina, I hope I answered your question. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Go take a break and I'll see you.